looks so yum. The egg, it's so yellow. I'm so glad school's finished. Yeah, I'm hungry. Yeah, me too. The wheat, it's so soft. Is that David Attenborough? The meat, it's cooked perfectly. Is he warming up his hamburger? Oh, it looks so delicious. David? Are you okay? Helen, Charlie, let me introduce you to my latest discovery, the best tasting burger in the whole Riverina. Give me a try. Uh, me too. Mm. What's, What's the secret? secret? Can you keep a secret? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Land here farmers? So David, Helen and Charlie head off out of town in search for answers. Why does that hamburger taste so good? The next stop on their journey is the Pincott's farm at Holbrook. Sam, Prue and their girls run Holbrook Paddock Eggs, an organic egg farm. Burger mm, they were good eggs. Yeah. How are you, Helen? Charlie. Charlie, how are you? David. David, nice to meet you. Um, we're trying to find out why the eggs in David's burger are so yellow. Oh, well come and uh, come and have a look around our free range egg farm and I'll I'll show you why. Let's go. Sure. Are these the eggs that you can make? Absolutely. So how come the eggs are so yellow? Because we move our sheds every week onto a nice fresh part of the paddock, the hens have always got plenty of fresh grass, and in that fresh grass are lots of insects, grubs, worms, all the things that a chook really likes to eat. So it gives it a nice, natural, well-balanced diet. How do you tell if the chooks are happy? For a chook to be happy, they want lots of space to roam around in. They want lots of fresh area where they can scratch and, and find the worms and bugs in the grass. They want to have dust bars, so they want lots of room and, um, and just a natural area that they like to, to scratch and forage about in. How do you keep the chooks safe from wild animals? On our farm, we have some special friends that live with us. They're called Marima dogs, and they're an Italian guard dog who uh, live with the chooks out in the paddock, and their job is to protect them from any foxes or other wild animals. How do you collect the eggs? So we come in each morning when the, the hens have laid their eggs. If I open this one up, you'll see some nice fresh eggs that have been laid this morning. We collect them one at a time and we take them off into town to be packed into their car. Awesome! The 
paddock is really big, but you've only kept the chooks down in one end. Yeah. Why is this? That's right, David. So we run the farm under a rotational grazing system or a planned grazing system so that we got the cattle and the chooks. The cattle are normally just in front of the chooks and then the chooks come in behind. And then we give the rest of the paddock a big rest so that the plants can fully recover and we get a nice big body of feed to grow up. And again, then all the insects and grubs and yugs can work their magic and, and provide that, that healthy system for the, uh, for the plants to grow in. Ah, rotational grazing. First the cows have their feed, and then the chooks, and then their trusty guard dogs follow from paddock to paddock. With, uh, with our eggs on, in a nice, good, true, free-range environment, as the seasons change, the eggs will change, just the colour will slightly change. And that's a good thing because the eggs are a natural product and these eggs are being produced in a natural environment. So your cows are kind of like your lawnmowers? That's right. The cows are an important tool for us. They, uh, they come through and they eat the grass down from a nice, tall height down to this sort of shorter height. So the chooks don't get lost in the grass, they don't like it too long. But we like to keep enough cover here that we're protecting the soil. We're making a nice environment for all the worms and the bugs and the grubs and all the important insects and things that we need in our farming system. And uh, so that's why we've got lot, lots of ground cover left. So even though we're heading into summer now and we've got a lot of dry grass, we've still got some nice green grass coming through here because we've kept our ground cover, which means when we do get rain, that these plants can still germinate and grow. The eggs will still have a nice colour to them, but as we change into autumn and spring, and uh, the, the spring grass gets really nice green lush grass, that's when you'll see your really bright, vibrant orange yolk, okay? Mm. Cool! Paddock trees important? Well the paddock trees play a really important role on our farm, as they do on any farm. For the hens they provide really valuable shade and shelter, uh, especially during the summer days or on those really hot days. The hens uh, need to get in the shade, keep nice and cool. They also um, use the, the area around the trees because they, they scratch around after all the bugs and grubs again. They then use all that dirt that they've exposed to help clean themselves in the dust bath. Um, the trees are also just really a valuable asset for us in that they provide the habitat for the wild birds that we really encourage on our farm and all the other insects and caterpillars and bugs and grubs and everything that we want in our healthy ecosystem. So we're, we're trying to encourage other trees to grow on our farm as well to, to help bring in that uh, the extra wildlife and the habitat that we're wanting. So we've planted other trees in plantations and also through our grazing, um, we've also, we're allowing a lot of other trees to naturally germinate and, and grow as well, which will be really terrific. So, do you have any other native animals besides the birds? Yeah, we do. We do, and we encourage all sorts of native animals. So, we've got the, the traditional ones, like we've got kangaroos, um, but we're, we're seeing more echidnas coming back. Um, we've got possums, greater uh, range of birds, uh, lizards. And, and that's all really important to us in our ecosystem and uh, the well-being of the farm and the, the general health of the farm. Ah, so those old paddock trees are really important. Charlie, Helen and David learnt that it can take up to 150 years for a tree to form a hollow big enough for a possum. Ah! Thanks, Mr. Pinkot. We had a great time. No worries, kids. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye. That was amazeballs. What's amazeballs? My favourite thing was holding the chooks. My favourite thing was collecting the eggs. Me too. 
Oh no! <laughs> so remind me why the eggs are so yellow? Thank <laughs> you.